All right, welcome to the Apex Vaulting Podcast. Uh, glad you guys are listening or, or watching on YouTube. Um, for the longest time, Calvin Hartman has been telling me to do a solo episode. And finally, I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Um, a topic that's been on my mind lately a lot, and I know I've talked about it on the podcast previously and sometimes posted about this, but looking at pole vault, the way uh, martial arts looks at teaching their, their art form, right? Pole vault can be seen as an art form. How can we do a better job of teaching it? And how can we start to think about the various levels and progressions, right? We have to go past just looking at the pole vault as like, okay, like how high did you get someone to jump? Because height alone doesn't really show if people have mastered the skill, right? I've always talked about in, in martial arts, if you have a black belt, that means that you've mastered the skill, the art form, right? That doesn't mean that you're a world champion. In fact, there's plenty of world champions that don't have black belts. They're just freakishly good athletes. And vice versa, there's many people who have black belts who have mastered the art form, uh, but just aren't athletic enough to be world champs, right? So if instead we start to look at our sport more as an art form and not just, okay, how high did somebody jump or did they win states or nationals, you know? Now you can kind of create a, an environment where you have lifelong learners. You can open a gym where you have middle school athletes, high school athletes, college, post-collegiate, master. You have this very rich environment of multi-age uh, athletes who are all different athletic levels and, and have all different kinds of goals. You know, you could have that person that, you know what, they're coming in three, four, maybe even five days a week. They're training really hard. They're trying to set records. They're trying to go to nationals. Or you could also have that person that's got a full-time job. They're married. They have kids, but they love coming in that once a week and trying to master the art form. And that's how you're going to keep, you know, people coming in and enjoying the sport and growing the sport, which is something that I, I think we all want as coaches. You know, I think a lot of people talk about growing the sport, making it bigger. We all have these dreams of like, you know, imagine if there was like a pole vault pay-per-view event on a Saturday, like they do with boxing and fighting or, or what if there was some kind of pole vault Super Bowl where like once a year, you know, millions of people watched, you know, this huge pole vault event. I think we all want that. But the thing is, the way you can get to that is by building your practice, right? Whether it's a pole vaulting club, wherever you coach, a high school, college, start to do a clinic, start to open it up and teach the art form. This is something that you can learn and develop throughout your life and continue to master it. Um, I think it's, it's super, super important, you know, for the development of, of the sport. Now, when you start to think about the pole vault as an art form, something that you, I, I think is very, very important is uh, the four stages of competence. If you've never heard of it before, it comes from psychology um, and it's discussed in many sports psychology books and, and you can just look it up on Wikipedia. I'm going to read through these stages and I'm going to explain it with examples from pole vault where you can see maybe your athletes because the more we can understand what stage someone is in acquiring a skill the better we can help them. You know, are they in the first stage? Are they in the second stage? How do we get them to that fourth and final stage? Um, it, it, it's gonna help you as a coach and it's also gonna help you as an athlete if you're listening to this, because if you know what stage you're in, it kind of gives you an idea of what you need to be doing. Now, when we talk about the four stages of competence, it's talking about skill acquisition, right? What is a skill? Pole vault is such a huge, huge event, right? Saying you, you, are, you have the skill of pole vault is, is too big. That's too general. We need to get more specific. Um, so even let's, let's break it down even more. You have skills of pole carry, run, plant, take off, swing, and then finally turn. So we have six stages, right? You have to address all these skills when you're practicing, right? Um, here at Apex, we have this really nice warm up where we kind of break down all those skills. All those skills are kind of touched upon in warm ups, um, minus the swing and turn. And then obviously, we can add the swing and turn when we get on the pit. Um, but you know, that's a great way. But then also, once you're looking through these stages of competence, you know, and you see how competent you are in 
this skill or that skill, you can know how to pinpoint your practice and decide, okay, well, maybe I need to do more drills on, on pull carry, or maybe I need to work on my turn more because that's what's missing. Um, but let's, let's look at these, these stages, right? So the first stage uh, of, of competency is unconscious incompetence, right? So before I even read the definition, think about it. Unconscious incompetence. What does that mean? Well, incompetence means you are not competent. You do not have the skill, okay? And unconscious means you are not aware, okay? So let's read the definition. The individual does not understand or know how to do something and does not necessarily recognize the deficit. They may deny the usefulness of the skill. All right. Perfect example, imagine doing a drill at practice. Let's say you're doing a takeoff drill with one of your athletes and, and you're really like trying to hammer it. One, they don't realize that their takeoff is deficient. And two, they might be very resistant to your coaching and not want to do the drill. Like, all right, cool. Did, can I go back to a five? You know, because that athlete doesn't even recognize that they are deficient in the takeoff, right? So the first thing, first stage is like you as the coach have to help that athlete become aware of the deficiency, right? So the individual must recognize their own incompetence, right? The lack of skill and value of the new skill. They need to understand why this is important, right? So as a coach, I can let that person know, hey, look, if you can get this takeoff drill better, you will grip higher. And if you grip higher, you will jump higher, right? So let's, let's really figure this out. Um, the length of time an individual spends in this stage, the first stage, depends on the strength of the stimulus to learn. This is so critical. And when I talk about this with my athletes, I tell them that person who really has a strong reason why they want to want to figure out this drill, they will advance through stage one much faster. They're going to learn this skill much quicker, right? Let's say they have a goal of like, you know what, I want to break my high school record. I'm, you know, half a foot away. I'm a senior. That person, maybe they're going to try a little bit harder on, on that drill. Um, or, you know, you might have on the opposite realm, someone just having fun jumping, right? And they're like, ah, whatever. Maybe that person's not gonna try as hard to match that skill. The thing is, and this is so, so important, whether you're that person going for the record or whether you're that person having fun, the real fun is in making progress. I know that right away. Anytime I've lost an athlete, they've, they've stopped pole vaulting altogether or maybe gone somewhere else, I know a big reason is because they, they've no longer uh, continued to make progress, right? And us as coaches, a lot of times we have to look at ourselves and go, okay, what could I have done better to help that person understand why our drills were important? Why the progression that I was taking them through was important? Because clearly something wasn't clicking. And this is so, so important. Uh, the first stage is critical. We as coaches have to make the athletes aware of the deficiency in skill and also make it clear to them how important and how valuable it will be to learn this drill, right? And make them better pole vaulters. So the second stage, right? Conscious incompetence. So think about the words, right? Conscious, now you are aware, you are awake of your incompetence. You know that you don't have the skill. And this is a big breakthrough, right? Because if you know what you're not good at, um, you can start to go to work and try to fix it, right? Um, I remember just like a month ago, me, me and uh, one of my athletes, Calvin Gould, uh, you know, we were talking about, he's been jumping now, I think nine, 10 years at the club. And we've been talking about how it's like, there's a certain point, it's like, you gotta know what you don't know. <laughs> you know, you have to be aware of what you don't understand in order for you to make any kind of progress, right? So in this second stage of skill acquisition, we have conscious incompetence, right? It says, though the individual does not understand or know how to do something, they recognize the deficit. So they don't have the skill, right? Let's, whatever, let's say it's a swing, right? Their swing is deficient. They know they're not good at swinging, but they realize they have a deficiency, as well as the value of a new skill in addressing the deficit, right? So they understand, it's like, okay, maybe this invert drill that we're doing, or not maybe, I know if I can nail this invert drill, my jump's gonna get a lot better, you know? 
I'm gonna move more pole, I'm gonna be more efficient coming off the top of the pole. Now, it says the making of mistakes can be integral to the learning process at this stage. This is the most important part of this stage, right? You have to realize, right, by the second stage, that failure is part of the process. You have to fail to get better. If we only ever did things that we were successful at, I don't know what we would do. We'd be at ground, like at the starting point. That's it. We'd never move on. Um, you have to do those drills. You have to do those progressions that you're not good at. You know, that's what's going to take you to the next level, right? But a lot of times, especially once we're, we're out of that beginner stage of just learning the vault, right? Like, because you think about it, someone's straight beginner, they never vaulted before. It's just fun. They're learning new skills and it's exciting, you know, but let's say now, you know, you're dealing with like a, a high school boy who jumps 14. This is well past the beginner stage, right? They might be resistant, right? Because we're thinking about pole vault in totality, right? Okay, this kid is a pole vaulter. He jumps 14 feet, but maybe he's deficient on his pole carry. Maybe he's deficient also on his turn. And if he doesn't crack those two skills, right, if he doesn't want to learn them and he'd rather just do the stuff he's good at, maybe he's, awesome, he's killer at takeoff drills. His pull carry is bad, so it keeps his grip down. But, man, that just that takeoff part, plant, jump, really good at it. Loves doing that stuff, but not willing to learn the skills he's not good at. That kid's going to get stuck. He has to accept that he's going to make mistakes. Failure is part of the process, right? And something that I think about a lot is like in today's society, and I remember watching uh, Real Sports with Brian Gumbel on HBO. They, they had an episode about it, about like the participation trophies. Everybody gets trophies, right? Your kid's part of a youth soccer league. Everybody gets a trophy. Doesn't matter if they won a single game, they're still getting a trophy. Then I'm shocked Always. And I actually started out as an English teacher for people that don't know. So I taught, you know, English in high school and um, at my club, I'm always shocked how many people have over a 3.0 GPA. Now think about it. Over a 3.0 means you're B, a B average. That means you're good. That means you're above average. How is it that like everybody at my pole vaulting club is above average? That's just not the case, right? Like, Going back to how I started this talk and talking about martial arts and a belt system, are you talking, is every pole vaulter in your club, would they be a black belt? Because if they are, I'm going to call bullshit. There's no possible way. Average means most people should be average. You've got to go above average just to be good and excellent. There should be very few excellent people because like it just takes way more effort. It takes way more skill and it takes way more talent to be at that top level, right? So I think in today's society, a lot of our athletes that come into the gym, especially the younger ones, middle school, high school, they're not used to failure. They're used to getting a high five, good job. And it's like, we have to teach them, no, no, it's okay. This is, you're doing this drill right now, either for the first time, or we're doing it because you still have yet to master it. And it's okay to make mistakes. As a coach, I will be super patient. You could make as many mistakes, you can mess this up as many times as you need to learn it and develop the skill. But you as an athlete also have to be patient, you know? And so I, I think that's super critical, right? So again, you, you, you start out, you're unconscious and competent. You don't even know that you're not good at a certain skill and you don't know the importance of it. Now in the second stage, you are aware of the skills that you're not good at, right? And what becomes critical is you have to accept that failure is gonna be a part of the process at this point. You, you're gonna have to mess up a bunch of times to try to figure out the timing, the movement, what, whatever the case may be to master the new skill, right? Like you wanna master that swing, you're gonna to have to do those swing drills and multiple variations of them. Maybe with an overhead carry, maybe with a low carry, a regular carry, from a one left to a three left to a four left. And you're just gonna to have to drill, drill, drill. It's gonna take time, right? The, the third stage now, once you've gotten past through that, is conscious competence, okay? So now, not only are you aware, but you have competence, you have the skill. Okay. 
I'm going to read the definition. This is going to shed some light on this. The individual understands or knows how to do something. They know how, they, they know how to swing now, right? However, demonstrating the skill or knowledge requires concentration. It may be broken down into steps and there's heavy conscious involvement in executing the new skill. So I'm gonna give you a couple scenarios with this. What this means is, yeah, maybe finally that kid has mastered those swing and invert drills. They get it. But if they're not focused, they lose it, right? Also, yes, now they can do the swing or invert in the drill, but what happens when we go to a full vault from five, six, seven, eight lefts? They might lose it, right? They haven't mastered it fully. It's like they have to be so focused and concentrated on the skill to be able to establish it. It, it takes a lot of effort. It's not easy yet, all right? Now, go through that long enough. Now we get to the fourth and final stage of skill acquisition, unconscious competence. The individual has had so much practice with a skill that it becomes set, quote unquote second nature and can be performed easily. As a result, the skill can be performed while executing another task. The individual may be able to teach it to others depending on how and when it was learned. I'll give you an awesome example. One of my athletes currently, she is amazing at pole runs. It literally, you could probably just like, she could roll out of bed and just do a perfect pole run. It's very, very good. I often have people watch her who are having difficulty with their pole run. Now, because she's so good at the pole run, now I can layer in additional drills, right? So it's like, for example, her swing has been poor. So her plant and carry are just so good that now we can really focus on those swing drills. It's super, super clean. And now she can address these other skills, right? She's second nature for her. The other thing at the end of that, that, that stage, I read, you may be able to teach it to others. All right. So I'm, I'm going into that rabbit hole of like martial arts and the belt system that they have. And, you know, I've been reading a lot about the belt system and the origins and stuff like that. And specifically, I've been looking at the jujitsu uh, belts and Brazilian jujitsu. And I started reading up and watching some videos on the Gracie gym. And I thought they had a really, really interesting idea, right? When they first had belts in the Gracie gym, athletes only ever got the white belt the beginner belt. They couldn't get anything else. Athletes only got a white belt. The belt system and the colors were only introduced for instructors. So if you didn't take instructor classes, you didn't start instructing, you didn't get any different color belts. And I'm listening to this video that's explaining this and I read through an article about it. And I'm like, this is genius. This is great because have you really mastered a skill if you can't explain it to other people? You know what I mean? There's just a different level. If you could teach someone else a skill, you have to understand it inside and out, right? Which another layer, can you teach other people to teach it, right? So that's, that's amazing. That's even next level stuff, right? But it, it got me thinking and an idea that I'm gonna throw out for everybody, because uh, I think soon I'm, I'm gonna start doing this kind of stuff, is why not have additional pole vault lessons that are instructor lessons? Like I, I'm thinking at my club, for example, right? We have sessions um, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday through Thursday. Friday's always been an open day. Maybe I could do an instructor class on Fridays, right? I don't know what I would charge. I have to think about that. But just think about the concept. One, anybody who really wants to get good at vault should probably go to these instructor classes. So if you've got that like junior or senior in high school, they're kind of like, you know, they're, they're going up. They're, they're trying to be that state level person, maybe, you know, be top five in the state or break school record or something. I could see that being a real interesting class for that person. 
because if they can learn how you introduce drills, how, what progressions you choose for what athletes, that person is going to be thinking about the vault in a different way. They will jump better. They will jump better. Their understanding and their skill acquisition, right? These four stages of competence, they're going to go into that fourth stage. They will become a better pole vaulter, 100%. Now, also, on top of it, you're teaching people how to coach your system. Well, guess what? They can coach. Like for me, I'm thinking like this might be a, a way better way. Like traditionally, like people have coached for me. They're an athlete for a while. They've been through the system. And, you know, I slowly introduce them into coaching. But what if you could formally get them to come in? You know, they're taking these instructor lessons. You know, they get to master instruction. And now, heck, they can coach. Because I think, I think there's going to be people out there, like I just mentioned, like maybe juniors and seniors in high school who are going to want to do the instructor classes to get to the next level of competence. But like, what about that person that just would like to instruct too? There's going to be people who want to instruct. There's also going to be people like I've had athletes of all ages, of all levels, who regardless of how high they jump, they're just, they love the vault. They want to learn it at, at such a deep level. They would love to take an instructor course. So I think that that's something that I know I'm considering. I'm, I feel like I'm going to do soon. Um, but I think it's a great idea for anybody doing an instructor's course, you know, because that person is going to learn pole vault at a higher level. And here's the other thing. I don't know, you know, how it is in everybody's area, but I know at Apex, we started our rent-a-coach program where high schools in the local area that don't have pole vault coaches, they can rent a coach from Apex for the day, or we can set up a package for a whole season. Um, but the thing is, there's never enough coaches. There's never enough pole vault coaches. So if we don't have enough pole vault coaches, how are people supposed to learn this event, you know? And so by having these instructor courses, now you kind of like, you're developing more coaching talent, which will allow more schools and universities to have access to coaches. Because I, I can't tell you how often when a pole vault coach leaves a college, I, you know, I get a phone call, hey, Bronco, do you know anybody who could do this? Or a high school, hey, Bronco, we need a pole vault coach, do you know anybody? And it's like, I, unfortunately, I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, one, I have the people who coach at Apex, I kind of need those people. You know, secondly, um, you know, it's, it's just, there's, there's not the numbers, you know, it's like, I don't have a list of like 50 people I know who, who are skilled enough to instruct that I, I can recommend them, you know? Um, so I, I think this would really, really help not only people become better athletes, but it would, it, we would build our, our population of, of good coaches in the pole vault so they can help teach it to other people and, and kind of grow the sport. Cause this is ground level stuff. Like, I think, I think again, too, like a lot of pole vault people, we jump the gun. You know, we, like I started out, I was talking about, you know, growing the sport and it's like, you know, a pole vault Super Bowl, you know, or a pay-per-view pole vault event. That would be awesome. I would love it, but we're not at that point. We're not at that point. And when you think about things like martial arts or like that Gracie gym that started in Brazil and now there's chains of Gracie gyms all over the world, right? It started with one gym, one family teaching other people how to do jujitsu, one family teaching other people to instruct jujitsu. And it just kept growing out from that. And I think in the pole vault, we're too concerned with like, how do I get what I want right now? Well, it's probably just not possible, right? You got to start with the small building blocks. Help as many people as you can in your community. Help grow the sport in your area. Get more people to enjoy this sport, you know? Because if you can get a lot of people in your area, wow, that's going to help. And then you never know which one of your instructors is going to maybe start a pole vaulting club. I don't know you know, wherever they're coming from. Like I, 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 look, I've had people drive as far as two hours to come to the gym. You know, it's like, well, maybe someone someday from that area who comes here is like, well, I'm, I'm going to start a gym down there, you know, awesome. You know, and that's, that's how the sport starts to really grow. You know what I mean? Like when, when we get to the point that's like every other town has a pole vaulting club, then, you know, we might, 
we might be able to get that pay-per-view event or something because we're going to have enough people watching, you know? So again, just to kind of uh, finish off, when you're looking at the pole vault as an art form, right? We have to be able to start to talk about, all right, what are the levels? How do I know someone has mastered this art form, right? Which again, you have to start thinking about a belt system. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a post soon on a belt system. But something that I think you need to even consider for the belt system is the four stages of competence. You know, are your athletes competent? And at what, what stage? Are they still stuck at one? Do they not even know what they're not good at? Ask some of your athletes. You might be shocked. I know I am sometimes like, hey, you know what? Like, how, how do we work on takeoff? Or how do we work on, you know, our pole carry? And like some people, it's like, even though it's like, duh, we do pole drops, bro. Kid, kids don't think of it like that. You know, athletes don't think of it like that. And so you got to break it down. It's like this, again, we are doing pole drops to work on your pole carry and plant, right? We're doing pole runs to work on your pole carry and plant and run. We're doing running drills to work on the run, right? Like they have to start to connect the dots and see, okay, what are the skills that we are working on? What skills do I even have to master? And where am I at? Where am I on each of these skills? What stage, right? And if you start to think about the pole vault in this way, you will help develop much better athletes that are more conscious of what they're doing. I think we've all been to meets where we've seen athletes who are, who are unconscious. You know, they, they jump. I mean, I, I'm sure we've all seen the athlete that, that takes off and we all know it's like, oh my God, please don't swing. And the kid swings, you know, because they're not aware of the pole speed, you know? So we want to build athletes that are very conscious of the process, very conscious of the skills that they've acquired or not yet mastered. And, and that, that will help develop your athletes faster, you know, and make them safer and help them jump higher. Um, I'm going to end the podcast at that. Thank you for listening. I hope this really, really helped. Anybody who has any questions or comments, uh, please email us at apexvaulting at gmail.com. Also, please follow us on Instagram. We're the, the, uh, the real Apex Vaulting on Instagram. And it's just Apex Vaulting on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and our YouTube channel, just Apex Vaulting. All right. And it, it, also, we have our website where I have all my blog articles, just apexvaulting.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time.